Hey, it's Tamara Kennedy. I just did an interview on the Zach Sang Show, and uh, we talked about my album, Sonder, touring, and everything in between. So check it out. Hi, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan, and we welcome to the studio for the first time ever, Dermont Kennedy. Hey. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you very much. You are genuinely one of my favorite artists, uh, I want to say of all time, but like I'll get back to you in a few years. Yeah, 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 of course. No, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm always going to be honest. Yes. But I've been listening to your stuff nonstop since 2019, maybe a little before. Okay. So probably last album, I got really, really into you and I've sure. stuck around. Nice one. In a very deep manner. Uh-huh. You make real fucking music, you tell real stories, and I love what you do with vocals. And I love that it's more than just you, it's also real instruments. So I'm really excited to have you here. Nice one, man. Yeah, thank you. It's, it, it's um, you know, it's a journey. I even think about our live show, like in terms of how you can approach that these days, you know what I mean? Like, we endeavor to just, like, make everything as real and as live as possible because it feels like that's potentially... We're in the minority doing that sometimes, you know? It's also where you come from, and you yes. posted something this morning about busking. I know, yeah. When you were 17, you started busking. <laughs> yeah. And that's when you took music seriously, even though you had been making music way earlier in life. Mm -hmm. There is something special about street performers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I is mean, it? It sets me up for everything you know what i mean like we played a festival yesterday uh we played ohana and you know there's a certain amount of people there that know you and a certain amount of people who don't and a certain amount of people who are just walking by and they make a decision whether they like it or not and that to me reminds me of busking you know because it's just you're playing to people all day and some people decide it's not for them and they keep moving and festivals are the same and it kind of but busking set me up in such a way that i just i don't really worry about how people judge the music you know it's just that's what i'm doing if you like it then brilliant like i'm so glad you're around but i don't get hung up on like what people think is there an actual strategy to bring somebody in uh no not really i mean don't get me wrong like in terms of my strategy i probably just sing louder so like i'm i'm more likely to like blow out my voice at a festival definitely how about when you were 17 busking? Yeah. Did you figure out, like, w were there certain songs oh, that you yeah, bring people yeah, yeah. in? Was there certain moments that would, like, get the crowd? Or uh, crowd. I mean, random bystanders sure. who haven't asked for you to perform in front of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get them to stop. Like, oh, what? definitely. Yeah, busking's an art form. And I got to say, like, I'm not very good at it. Like, it really... It's a thing in the sense that like there's so many little clever ways that you can win people over and get people to kind of stop. Certain songs you can sing... Like, for me, it was about singing covers, which is half the reason I fell out of love with Buskin, because I was like, I want to do my own thing, uh. you know? But I know if I do that, then people are less likely to stop. People are less likely to pay attention. And, and so for me, it was like certain songs that were in the charts. And uh, it's a whole thing. Like, I had this big, huge mat I'd put out in the ground. You basically take up as much space as you can. You know what <laughs> I mean? And you have to lay stake to it pretty early, because you're competing oh, with yeah. other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's another thing I didn't love about it. Like, it can be quite kind of tense and and quite far from the values that i love music for you know it can be quite like territorial and stuff and that's pretty weird to me i think so you set up your mat yeah and i mean did you ever try originals out a little bit on but, the crowd? so what i did if there was days where it was like going really badly and i wasn't sort of like attracting a crowd i'd just be like fuck it i'll just play whatever i like and i'd play like ben howard bonnie Iver, and then my own <laughs> stuff and uh and that would then it would just be a treat to myself because i was like there's no point me being miserable playing songs that i don't love i might as well just do my own thing for a bit and go home tough days though sometimes but that realization is attached to your first album which is titled without fear yeah you, some of the songs on that album, correct me if I'm wrong, they're eight years old back then. Like, like they were True, sitting yeah. around for eight years before you chose to put them on an album. Definitely, yeah. Or I just didn't even have the opportunity, you know? Yeah. I had no real platform. But you were writing. I was writing all the time, but like, what used to happen with me was, say, s sort of a very short chronology of my career is like, solo, band for four years, yes. solo now. And when I was solo, when I was like, say... 18 or sorry like 16 to 20 and then beyond that when i was in the band for four years it was this routine of like okay we work really hard rehearse all the time we're all quite serious about this and then you bring a project out and you spend all the money you have and and on artwork and on the production like there's all this huge amount of work goes into it and then you release it and nothing happens right and and of course there are moments in music history where things just go crazy like it just it clicks and everything you go from 
having no career to having a career. But nowadays, I see that there's such a machine in terms of music, and it like not that you have to take part in that, but just there's such a network of things that have to go your way for stuff to work out. And I was so oblivious to it. And it, but it's weird because I used to like work so hard on bringing out these projects, nothing would happen. And you get really disheartened. And those songs are kind of gone, right? So like, I didn't need to release stuff for a long time because I was just like, I got this in my head. I'm not in a hurry. And uh, so when the time comes, they can exist, you know? So you wrote these songs originally for the band or after the band splits? Bit of both. We had a couple, like there's a song called After Rain that we still play now um, that started off as a band thing. And a uh, song called Dancing Under Red Skies that I wrote years ago. We played it as a band and that's on Without Fear. Yeah, You, you kept your drummer yeah, from that band. Of course. What goes wrong there? What do you mean? Why wasn't the band right? Oh, uh, nothing like actively went wrong. It was just like I'm a pretty impatient person and uh, and it just didn't seem like we were really getting anywhere. And um, to be honest, I just I was so drawn to the idea of just not having to think about anybody else i gotta hmm. say and just be like i'll do this by my by myself and and give it a go and whatever i just i i love the idea of not having to consult other people i hate to be that guy but i do think that there's like a little bit and i've said this before and we've heard it from like really incredible musicians over the years yeah you need to be a little selfish especially in your mid early 20s to make it as an artist definitely yeah, it, well, this, I mean, like, not this, this is a very uh, weird sort of segue into album chat, but, like, in terms of Sonder, it's like, I love that because it takes me away from the selfish side. I'm like, let's talk about all of us instead of just me. Like, it's a very selfish pursuit. Yeah, for sure. How do you define Sonder? Because I realize that there's no real definition to it as I was looking sure. for it today. And it's not even, like, it, it's sort of, like, for want of a better phrase, it's like a made-up word, right? Yes. But, um... <laughs> But it is, yeah, it's just about the awareness that all of us, everybody in the world is living a life as vivid and complex as each other. So I just, what I mean in terms of like how that relates to me as a musician, mm. you know, you just get caught up doing these tours and working on music and everyone's asking if you're okay and all this stuff. And it's all so kind of like, am I okay? How do I feel? Like, how am I doing? And it's like, everyone's the same. Do you know what I mean? I just happen to sing all the time. You know, like all my friends are going through stuff. All my family are going through stuff. Everybody has good days and bad days. And, so I love that. And, and by the way, I say selfish and I think maybe it's more... Uh, a Self-centered. Of, yeah, a period say. of growth and self-evaluation and understanding. Yeah. And that gives us without fear, but realizing... Does it take success for you to be able to give energy from thinking about yourself to giving energy to thinking about other people? Maybe, and yeah. Yeah, it gives me a bit of space, right? Yeah. Because I can be like, all right, this has worked a little bit in terms of like my own thing. Yeah, and you set up a foundation. Right. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of, it's this thing where, um, where again, with music, you have to have this mix of like sensitivity and ambition and so it's like without fear kind of worked for me because i was kind of like okay that's the way i want to approach this and music aside that's just the way i want to approach life but then i want the music to work too so uh that's always a battle for me like the sort of um this really kind of uh ruthless ambition i have alongside trying to be quite a sensitive person you know i get that do yeah. you let anything new into your life between without fear and sonder uh yeah, I'll tell you what I did. Like, in terms of creatively letting stuff in, I would say without fear I was trying to make music for myself, whereas nowadays I'm way more open to the idea of, like, us as a collective and, and thinking about who's going to hear it when I'm writing it, you know? Does that change your attachment or relationship with these songs? With the music? No. No, it probably puts a bit more... It, it makes me a bit more aware of the responsibility I have, maybe. You know, like, I think about people who've been listening to my music for a while and what they might expect and what they might be disappointed by and what they might be excited by. And I can't let it get into my head too much because it's just about me, really. I, I have to just do what's right for me. But, um, but no, nah, if anything, it kind of deepens my attachment to the songs because it just it means we can all kind of share them together. I like that. But so I, I do. Like, making music for yourself is sweet, too. When you're When you say making music for others, is that really evident in the lyrics as opposed to the production and the sonics um or is it both to be honest i don't know how much it alters the actual music itself it's just maybe within my own head yeah yeah 
And I, I mean, and, and then it just, it makes me a more, I would say it translates to being on tour quite a bit because it makes me just a more open performer. I want to share it with people. Whereas before I'd just be like staring at the guitar, like not talking to anyone, you know? Mm. What? Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Was it something to someone that was the first single from this album or was it? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Why was You that scared th- me for a sec. I was no. like, I think so. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> Incredible record. Thank you. That art and music is up to the person who's ingesting it, right? Like it's up to the ears of the beholder. It's something different to me than it is to the person who made it. Why was that the right record to set the tone for what was to come? Good question. Yeah, that song was written a long time ago too. And it started off just me and piano and it was was just dead straight, just vocal and keys. And, uh, And that's an interesting thing, right? Like, I'm lucky enough to be playing really big shows now, sort of here and in Europe and wherever. And uh, and like I gotta say, when that song found this production that it currently sits with, it's kind of it's a very sort of anthemic big thing. And I'm just really glad that we play these shows now, and it feels great. Like I love playing that song because it just feels like a moment. And um, why that was the right one, I don't know. It just it felt like again talking about like ambition and integrity and creativity it's just it felt like a good mix of like i think people can relate to this but it feels like me it feels like a lyrical it like it feels like a lyrical piece of work instead of just being like oh this is a clever melody this is like it does it feels like it's me speaking and um and so yeah i don't know like it just it felt like the right move at that point when you were behind your piano writing it where were you like where where were you at did you want to be something to someone in specific something to everyone i always think about my mom with that song you know like because i think there's such an expectation for me to like write about romance and like relationships and and stuff like that and i'm just like i remember my mother um if you ever saw anyone that was like down on their luck just even like driving through town or whatever uh i remember my mom saying some mother's son and I don't know if people say that over here but like no matter how bad it is for somebody it's like well some mother's son and um and so that's what it kind of meant to me. And and so now that idea of something to someone um, is a really cool thing for me to think because when I'm singing that song, I look out at the crowd and see people singing it and it, it's a lovely kind of range of emotion that I'll never know about because it could be somebody being like, ah, oh, shit, like I lost that thing. And it could be someone being like, sweet, like I'm in this relationship. Or it could be someone who's really struggling, but they're like, no matter what, I still have my parents yeah. or my sister or whatever. So uh, I like, I, I like when I touch on ideas that aren't just like romance. No, like, and they're beautifully universal and yes. empowering and a reminder that I'll, uh, definitely people who touch that record need to hear. Right, right, right. Yeah. There's power there. Thank you, man. How do you know when a song is done? Yeah, I was thinking about that this morning. You don't really, right? Like you just, like I know for a fact if I had the whole album and went into the studio today and started messing around with synths and stuff to be something worth keeping. That's a fact. But like, at some point, you just got to let it go. You really do. You use other people's vocals very heavily. Like, you do you... Obviously, each session is going to be different, but do you bring in, like, a choir of people or background singers that you just layer? You know, for the most part, it's me. Um, pitched or changed, but there are other singers in there, yeah. It's like friends of friends and just people who's voices kind of fit the project and and like it was fun because i was with uh dan nigro working on better days he's so talented yeah and he had a friend come in and sing but she was singing these irish words and stuff and i love that you know because she was just like how do i actually say this yeah yeah which was nice what to be in a room with him yes and do you go in with something already done like do you have a recording of you at a piano uh, no, not always. I mean, there is no one set way to do it, I guess. With Better Days, he produced it, but I hadn't written it with him. It just, it, it sort of ended up in his lap and he, he nailed it. And then, but say, for example, me and him and Scott Harris wrote Dreamer together and um, and that was just from scratch, yeah. So Better Days sounds like what before it gets to him? Far more, that was a funny one, honestly, because it was far more... Uh, it was kind of like, you know, Issues, that song? Because I got issues. It sounded way more like that. It was in that world. And uh, and it was way sort of prettier, more mellifluous, like more pleasant. And then 
Dan called me and he was like, I have this idea. Like, please don't hate me. Take your time. <laughs> like, just, I'm going to send it to you and see how you feel. And he, he sent me this uh, 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 in the post course. And uh, it really, like, fucked me up at the beginning. I couldn't live with it. And then uh, literally just everybody, me, Scott, like, um, over the course of a few days, we were just like, I kind of really want to listen to this all the time. So I'm really, I'm in awe of that because to me, I feel like I'm somebody who has good ideas every now and then lyrically and I can find the music that lives with that. But like when someone's like, trust me, I have this idea, live with it. It's going to get in your head. Uh, that's quite amazing to me, I think. Is that scary to trust somebody like that? Yeah, definitely. You know, because and, and I don't think uh, Dan's not like this. He's a lovely person. But I think it could be a scenario where someone's like, oh, I'll give this a go. Whereas to me, it's my life. You know, it's my <laughs> career. And I think about this all the time. I think. And if there's any sort of advice I'd ever have to anyone, it's like, you got to know what you're doing because, like, you could go down the road with somebody who wants to sort of steer you down a certain creative path and you could follow them down that way for ages and then they just change jobs, whatever it is, and you're still there, you know? And you have to sort of pick up the pieces from that. So you have to, you always have to sort of have people following your path instead of letting them steer you wrong, I think. It forever belongs to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. for the rest of them... You totally. Know, if they're lucky, it's just a check that comes in. <laughs> yeah. So, where were you, I, I'm more fascinated, like, did he take your, like, did you have to recut vocals between your first pass at Better Days and what we ended up getting today? I think I did, yeah. You did? Yeah. And I mean, there's some things, like, you could ask me about certain songs, and over the course of the last three years, I'd be like, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But, um, but mostly, I'm awful for redoing vocals, and I'm sure a lot of artists are like this, but, um, like sometimes just in the name of trying to do better, I'll always be like, no, I need to redo that. I need to redo it. And, and so often it's not better. You know what I mean? Cause like something to someone's a good example. I redid that and then we just ended up. And I think this comes with being more established and a bit more confident. It's like, okay, you got to just, the first day was the best take you did. Cause the intensity and the excitement lives in that one, you know? So when you get back in and you're like, I have to redo this. And it's really kind of like, pernickety and you're trying to be really careful it's like you're so tense you know but on the day you write it it's loose and it's it's free so i think you got to trust that a lot you can't duplicate that energy no you can't no so where are you at with better days are you in a are you in a good place when you write it or are you in a shitty place looking to get into a better place good place i gotta be honest like despite the seriousness of the songs and how heavy some of the ideas are like i'm always in a good place and not to be corny but it's just like I'm out here, like, I wrote that song in L.A., and it's like, I'm in L.A., in the sun, making music for a job. Like, I don't have to think about anything else. I've reached a point in my life where every single day all I have to think about is music. Like, and, and not to be like, what could be better than that? It's like, those days are difficult, but, like, I was in a good place, you know what I mean? So a lot of stuff, if it's negative, it's almost retrospective. And, and mm -hmm. um, in terms of that one, yeah, that was just about my own journey through music and stuff. And uh, I didn't necessarily, it feels very COVID-y, that song, and I didn't want it to. And uh, But then when we started playing it live, I was like, fine. I was like, this feels COVID-y, and it's all good, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's anthemic. Totally. And it's just, like, I know now when I play that song to crowds, there's people in the crowd who've probably lost loved ones to COVID and I'm yeah. like it's, who the hell am I to be like no it's not about that stop <laughs> you know but that's our it's up to you it, yes. once you release it it's up to me to figure exactly. out what it means to me yeah 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 which is why like I don't get into it too much in terms of meanings because I'm just like you know it's just a song you take it how do your parents feel about this like they sacrificed a lot and drove you a lot of places and yeah. did a lot of shit early on in Ireland to give you a foundation oh for sure yeah like open mics and stuff that my dad would take me to when i was 15 and bars that i wasn't allowed in and he'd get me in and it was on it like we'd have a deal with the guy in the door just being like he's just gonna play and then he's gone and uh <laughs> and all that kind of thing countless things yeah absolutely like hilarious amounts of uh sacrifice and support and but to this day you know and nothing's changed which is uh, something i'm really proud of it's just it's all the same your first original that you ever wrote, was it for the band or was it for you? No, for me, yeah. What yeah. was it? It was a song called Lost in the Sun and it's really bad. I was like 15. I see, you see, like, I used to, I was obsessed with reading in a way that I wish I still was. And, um, and it was all like The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and all these kinds of things. And, uh, 
I was 14, 15, so I had very little life experience to draw on. So I just, I'd literally just try and create little worlds like that in my songs. Yeah. But like, there's something that's instilled in you very early on that Definitely. active imagination. That oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, sometimes I think about it now, and I think about where I am as an artist, and I'm like, well, um, sometimes I'll just force myself to read because it's this thing of um, what goes in really is going to come out. You know, like if I'm staring at my phone all day, I'm not having good thoughts. You huh? know, it's not a healthy, creative environment, and so. Uh, it's important for me to just like go to the cinema by myself, go to a museum by myself. And even if I'm having a day where I don't get to enjoy it fully, it's like, it doesn't matter. Just let it sort of seep into your brain in whatever way. That is, you are what you freaking marinate in. Yes. You totally. know? Yes. What you yeah. consume. Yeah. It totally affects your day to day. Yes. What are you thinking, Daniel? When you release a song like Kiss Me, are you nervous to put a song like that out? Because it is somewhat of a poppier sound. Sure. And then I know your audience is like, they love you for you and your voice. So what's going through your head when you make that song and then decide, okay, this is coming out this way? Totally. Just exactly what you said. It's just, that's the way it is, you know? Um, but then we play that song live and it just feels great, you know? And it's lovely because I have this sense of vindication. And also it's this thing where, you know, I just, I can't worry too much about that. You know, I can't, because it's important for us as artists to move. And I think, um, especially in hip hop, like you look at any artist, like, like say like artists that have really stood the test of time they probably have a lyric at some point as in like like that if you want my old shit buy my old albums it's like you know and it's that type of thing so you got to keep moving the whole time and it's just you got to push yourself and to be honest it's just it's a kind of cool feeling to be nervous i think if i released 10 acoustic songs on an album certain people would be very happy but i wouldn't be yeah you know and i'm the only one doing this so um so yeah but I think it's the perfect evolution from the first album and everything really? you put out. Yeah, hundred percent. As somebody who's it. consumed it a lot, sure. Yes. Plus, what in God's name does pop even mean nowadays? It you know? means nothing. Yeah. It is n nothing but a collection of popular songs across genres. Exactly. Yeah. There is. Yes, you can be like, okay, it's catchy here. Like maybe that's the only connective tissue. Yes. Between all of the pop hits that totally. have come. Yeah. But sonically today, I mean, there's no, it just doesn't exist. It doesn't. Uh -huh. and, and depending on who you talk to, some people will be like, there is a formula. Like if you sing songs within a certain key, yep. then both men and women can sing it. Like everybody has their own theories. Oh yeah. Well, I can promise you it's not that. Like I'm sure there's some studios where it's like heartbreakingly ruthless as in like tempo needs to be this. Like the idea needs to be like, I'd say. And my hope is that like, it's at least wrapped around genius and i think some of the people who you, you think would have a formula like a max martin or yes i don't know like a charlie Puth who's written a bunch of fucking hits they're the people who like tell you that like little things could exist between all the songs but there really isn't one no i mean like i thought it was quite uh telling with that court case ed sheeran had recently yeah and, and he'll show up next year by the way he's gonna actually have to like testify really and they were talking about it and they were just like they were sort of, it seemed like there was this mad disconnect in the sense that they'd be like, did you write this three years ago? And he's just like, I don't know. He's like, I'm writing songs every single day. Like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Like if you're constantly, like if the output and how busy you are in the studio, like you're just turning stuff over every single day. It's nuts. Yeah. Like, and people like that, like there are people who write over a hundred songs a year and yes. it's a part of an exercise and out of the hundred you get, I don't know, maybe like one or two good ones. Sure. And it's a weird conversation, right? Because nowadays... You could be like, oh, that's really sort of diluted. Like, there's too much music. Like, how could you make mm. good stuff? And it's like, well, think about artists years ago. You look, like, you think about writers. Like, it's not sort of an uncool thing to get in every day and just write. And if it's useless, no one cares. You know, you're just exercising. Yes. Music's the same. Um, and I got to say, like, I'm not necessarily even that type of artist. I don't, I don't write every single day. And and I I, I sort of I lean into the idea of kind of writing when it feels like I need to. But um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think about this quite a bit. It's the fact that, say, I don't know, it almost feels like where I'm at in my career, like up and coming thing, like in terms of in terms of your integrity, it can almost feel like a bad thing to have a hit, right? Mm -hmm. Like it can be like, oh, you went and did that thing. But then like you think about someone like Adele has these sing-alongs, it's like, wow, she's so cool, isn't it? It's like, well, when do you transition from like <laughs> trying to do that to doing that, you know? It, 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 I, you know, that's, where, that's like the trillion dollar question. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think... I think it's not a transition that people think about. It's something that no. needs to be totally like... Absolutely. But in, but say where I'm at, if I'm trying to get to that point where everyone's like, wow, look at that. Like, so there's an awful lot of ignoring you have to do. 
and be like, just oh, yeah. put blinkers on and just be like, I'm doing this thing. Tunnel vision. And then when I get there, everyone will still be with me. But like, yes. yeah, it's nuts. Well, it you it have really to, is nuts. You have to have confidence in yourself and the, the, the quality of the art you put out there. Yes. And not give a fuck about anything else. And exactly. isolate yourself from everything else that's going on. Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely don't think Adele's on Instagram all the time. But then there's also some pop stars who are like on TikTok yeah. and see everything and no, everybody is different. Yes. Truly. There is no right way. Yeah. At all. No. Any love. The layer on that vocal is really different for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. What'd you use to get there? We just, it was essentially through a keyboard and it was all just like vocoder to bits and mm -hmm. we did, I didn't sing it too much. Again, I just let it go and uh, yeah, that is some of my favorite lyrics on um, on the album. Someone told me today the runtime for the album is like 36 minutes. I didn't even know that. That's, do you like that? I don't mind. The, in a way, I'm kind of like, I worry. I'm like, should it be longer? Like, I feel like I'm not mm. that guy, like, churning out a really quick album. But also, I think I like things that are concise, too, you know? I, I think nowadays, like, sort of talking about Adele and, say, Florence and the Machine, I, I have a real, I have a much deeper appreciation for artists who can, like, have this kind of compact, not a nice word, but, like, concise and direct songs that can just really impact people. Like, say, when I... Because when I grew up, obviously it was all like Ben Howard, Bon Iver, it was it was all that kind of stuff. And and sometimes when I go back now, it seems a tiny bit formless to me. And I'm kind of like, oh, I wish this just like did this at that moment and didn't have this like five minute outro, you know. Mm. And sometimes you're in that mood too. But uh, I feel like I just have a deeper appreciation for artists I didn't necessarily warm to years ago. Did you have to cut any of these songs down for length or time wise? You? Yeah. Nah, nah. Whatever it's way they are. Just whatever it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you? How many songs did you have done for this album? Couldn't tell you now. Same thing. Memory is gone. But it's like, I don't know, 60, 70, something like that. 60, 70 to get down to 13? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What is that process of dwindling down even like? Um, You just know. When you touch on an important idea, you just know. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if I, if we had time and I played you all those ideas, like, you wouldn't be like... Oh, how'd you let this go? Like there's days where you're just like, oh god, you know. Like there's days where, and don't get me wrong, all of them are like songs that could exist in another lifetime. But um, I think you know quite clearly. It's you see, for me, it's very easy to uh, write a song that say someone at home might be like, oh, that sounds nice. Like as a chorus and a verse. But for me, it's not it, great. No, and in terms of uh, subject matter and stuff, it, it, very quickly you're like, ah, this has nothing to do with me, and I'm not doing it today and for me it's very important nowadays to uh be quite sure of that because the amount of touring and stuff i do it's mm. just like i need to believe this every day you know will you sell songs what do you mean oh give them away i don't know no i don't think so i've I, never done that no nah. ever ever I, I mean i don't say ever to nothing but um to uh but uh but pff, it's not something i have done it, it's never in my head that idea i don't think about it paradise do you write that to the production they give you no, I got sent that song. I wrote some of it. I like I, I rewrote the verses, but I got sent the guts of that song when it, like in the middle of COVID. I was driving down in a, a place called County Kerry in Ireland, uh, middle of nowhere, and it was it, that song kind of just really reached me at a very good time. I was just like, "Sweet, let's do it!" Like I was into it. It's, what'd you change? I changed the lyrics in the verse um, just to sound a bit more like me. Fucking great record. Thank you. And it's funny, right? Because then you break it down, you do an acoustic version, and you're like, this is a good song, yes. you know? Because um, for me, even that sort of like sonic world isn't something I'd necessarily dive into. It's not like if we did this interview three years ago, I wouldn't be like, I'd love to do a song like that, you know? Mm. But then when it just, it got sent to me, I was just like, this sounds great. Like, this is a really good song. And singing it was a really interesting sort of lesson for me because I did like 150 takes and it was this very funny kind of uh, setup where I was at my parents' house and I had the laptop open and I'm an awful producer, like I do not produce. But because of just necessity, I had the laptop and I had Logic and I had the whole thing ready to go and I had a microphone. And uh, I had headphones on just on my left ear for the music. And then on my right ear, I had an AirPod in and I was on the phone to Medusa. And then... <laughs> Speaking into my headphones was Cause, the producer in Toronto, who was like using that program to control my laptop. And so it was like this really weird, like three way call. But we, I sang it like 150 times or something because wow. he was just like, I'm telling you, like this kind of record, it needs to be so concise, like really tight in a way that for my music, I don't necessarily have to worry about. You know, it's quite, uh, 
Like it's more about feeling than yes. sort of like to the grid. Emotion. So, so they'll take those 150 takes and actually use a piece of probably I all of them. so. Yeah, I guess so. And it could be like, yeah, like God forbid what the actual session looks uh, like, you know? It's yeah. fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Will you work that song into your set? No, I don't think so. I did a gig in Nashville. It was our first gig back after COVID. Literally first time back. And I went to play it acoustically and I was just like, nah. Really? Yeah. Huge record. Huge. And then like... You feel obliged, but I was just like, nah, like, sweet, it lives. And, and if they ever ask me, like, I did sing it with them in New York at a nightclub and stuff, and that was a laugh. But, like, in terms of my own set, I could kind of feel the crowd kind of not be that into it. it was Like, it was almost reassuring for me in a way, because mm. I was like, sweet, they want to hear, like, without fear, and they want to totally. hear stripped back stuff and all that kind of thing that really comes from my own brain. But, like... I think that song needs to have that big sound world behind it. When I did it on the guitar, I was like, nah. Do you think there's like a, a, you have to play both games to really be successful today in terms of if an opportunity like that to feature on a record yeah. comes along, yeah. you know it's going to be huge, you uh -huh. know it's going to be wa touch a wider audience, Yeah. then it has the potential to be really mainstream. Yeah. But I believe your music is already mainstream and has the potential to be even more mainstream. Uh -huh. But a song like this is different because it is, I don't know, it's like, Dance music is so universally universal. Yeah. That like it's touching people that would most likely never go and see somebody with a live band behind them ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So is there a balance? In terms of why I might have done that? Well, I even also look at history, right? Like some of the biggest, uh, some great artists have started by doing great features with yeah. like different DJ duos or DJs, whatever. And then yep. after that, it affords them luxury. Yeah. Even more. It, Different luxury than without fear yeah, yeah, gave yeah. you, but you get what I'm talking about, totally. right? Totally. But you talk about luxury, like for me, in that scenario, I have the luxury of just being like, this song is good, I'll sing it. Yeah. Uh, and also, I get quite flattered in that moment when they're so successful in their field and they're like, we'd love for him to sing it. And I'm like, that means a lot to me. You and there's know? pressure off of you. Yeah, but also on, because you're like, this has to be really good now. Um, and... But no, I can honestly say, like, the sort of potential for growth and new listeners doesn't come into my head. I'm just like, it's a good song. Why wouldn't I do it? And also, in the middle of COVID, I was like, I gotta do something. <laughs> you know? going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Power Over Me. Yeah. Beautiful record. Thank Are you, you talking about a person or a substance? I'm talking about a, a person. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Good question. I'm talking about a person. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful song. Yeah. Is there a song here, though, that has taken on new meaning from the first time you wrote it to now? Definitely so many of them let me think like like for example like without fear has a lyric in it on the record that says uh i wonder if it'll all work out and for me at that time i was just going through a lot of stuff and i was like oh, like this may not play out the way i thought it would and now things are quite nice right like i i have a certain amount of progress in my career i get to play shows whatever and uh but then when i sing it nowadays i'll often say i still wonder if this will all work out because it just you know, like priorities just change yeah. and, and your life changes. And, and so, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So that song has definitely, its meaning has grown and changed a little bit. Yeah. Always. And then there's certain songs where, like, say I have a song called The Killer Was a Coward. And, and like I was telling you, I used to read all the time. And when I wrote that song, I was really just like, fuck it. Let's like make a fictional world and I can sort of get my kicks in terms of like storytelling. And then over time, I was like, this song is exactly about something I went through, you know? So, uh, but you didn't realize until later. Not really, no. Or even maybe I just I write in a broad enough way that I can attach my life to it. But uh, yeah, it's a nice feeling. That's it's really special. Mm. One life. Yep. Hard realization that you're never going to be able to live one life with this one person. For sure. You're never going to be able to merge existences together. It ends. But also for me, it's just like that the key lyric is one life is never long enough. And it's mm. just like, I don't know, I think about that way too much. One life is never long enough. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's the crux of everything, right? Like, that's why life is beautiful, because uh, it ends, I guess. If yeah, it was, that's the only way you value what you have. Exactly. Is by yeah, knowing exactly. that it's going to come to an end. Yep. Because if it goes forever, why would you value something that for sure. has no time limit? Totally. And still, I take too much stuff for granted. But yeah. Are you in love today? Yeah, man. Sick. <laughs> leave it there jealous <laughs> is it better for music making being in love or i wouldn't say there's a better or worse way i don't think there's a set way that is good i mean i've had some bad stuff in my life that definitely gave me some songs but i definitely don't want to do it again you know and i've had some 
good stuff that has given me so much song so many songs but um but nah i could i couldn't point to one period in my life and be like that was way more uh fruitful in terms <laughs> of my music like uh nah some people can like some people sit on the couch and 100% like, and i've seen like quotes about like yeah, when i was at my shittiest yeah and quotes about like oh you can't you sort of have to be sad to write certain songs it's like i don't think so and and i think if an experience is sort of deep enough and lasting enough like that well doesn't really dry up you know what i mean like like i got a lot of stuff from without fear and the similar ideas uh gave me songs on on sonder too and it's just like i don't know I, uh, why why should i sort of think like oh no that idea is gone you know and like you said i write in a way that's kind of relatable enough that um I would like to think my audience isn't necessarily like, oh, he's still talking about that thing, you know? It's like... I, I never, and I've listened to a bunch of stuff, I never think all the songs are about one thing or one person. Okay, ever. good. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I think I struggle, you know? If you were like, what's this one song about? I'd be like, I don't. Like, about six, seven different things. And it's not to say I write really complex music. It's just I struggle to be like, let's write a song about this one thing, you huh? know? I like to sit down and write songs and whatever lyrics come into my head will go on the page and... uh and they'll be about really different stuff. One line will be about the best in my life. The next one will be about the worst. And to be honest, that contrast is very important to me. And that's how I write good music, I think. Do you write mostly alone or will you write with other people? Writing alone is my favorite, but I'll write with other people sometimes. And to be honest, it's been very beneficial to me. I'm not saying like people feeding me lyrics, but like people just challenging me on certain ideas, you know? And, and I've sort of met the people it's kind of a combination of things. I've met the people who know when to challenge me and know when to just let me go. And then I've also met the people who, and also to be honest, I'm at a point in my life where if someone's like, that doesn't really make sense. I'm like, all right, well. If it I, works for you, yeah, it works for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, huh. I, like the first time I heard that was in one of the first, like the first time I was in the studio nearly. And it really threw me because I was like, well, I know what it's about and, and I don't care what you think. And, um, it makes sense to me in quite a cryptic personal way and I like that about it you know it's one lyric like for me it's a lyric in all my friends it says songs and cathedrals in month three and like you know now I can look at 10,000 people singing those exact words at me and it's not this thing of like oh you should have listened to me but it's just like that situation does exist you know not every single thing has to be like well this is this part of the story and then follow on to the next part it's like music's weird you know let it go art isn't always literal so Nah. But the first thing you said about having that right combination of people who challenge you when it's right to challenge you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also let you do your thing mm -hmm. when they know you're in that zone. Because yeah. as easy as somebody can let you go, yeah. they can also fuck that flow. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to be close enough as people at a certain point to just be like, all right, leave me alone this time. Like, yeah, to have yeah. that... People take that for granted, but it's hard to look somebody in the eye that you're look, working with and go, like, leave me alone. Oh, yeah, Let yeah, me just yeah. do my thing. Yes, especially when they're a friend. Um, yes. And someone you respect. But also, I think, I think there's, like, for, and I definitely was like this at the beginning, and I have to sort of shout out to someone called Kerry Willits, who I've written a lot of music with, and first person I ever sort of got in a studio with to write, and I didn't even know this dynamic existed of, like, artist plus songwriter. Because to me, it was like artist plus producer. I didn't know there were songwriters um, who whose name I wouldn't know, but they're experts at it, right? I didn't know that person existed in the musical society. And and so, but it was the perfect person for me to start writing with because he was just kind of like, we could do whatever you want to do. Like, you can just, we can like write music together and you write lyrics. You can, I can write down a bunch of lyrics and you can take whatever you need. And we still do it that way, me and him. But it was the loveliest introduction to it because it showed me that like this can be any way. This, this, there is no set formula. And because uh, the whole, even that idea of sharing a song with somebody was so alien to me. So that was the perfect introduction to me because like naturally, as a young person who writes songs, I was really guarded and quite sort of precious about my stuff. And I was just like, why would I share this with anybody, you know? Whereas that intro got me out of my comfort zone a healthy amount to then go in with somebody else who's a bit more like, all right, what are we doing today? And then, so it just takes me to a point now where like I can be in a studio and if it's not the vibe I need, I'll be like, this doesn't work for me today. And I won't shut a session down, but it's just like, at least when I leave, I'm like, all right, that doesn't mean it's my fault. It's huh? just, that, w that wasn't the right thing for me. And that's okay. Yeah, totally. But I think, I think it's important. It was important for me to learn and it's benefited me hugely and gotten me 
uh, given me the opportunity to work with some really, really great people that I might not have encountered if I was just like, now no one can talk to me in the studio ever, you know? But, but that comes from confidence and learning and what that guy early yeah. on brought out in you. Totally. And it's about being open in general, right? Mm. I think sometimes it's very easy to go into the music industry just like with your walls up, which is, you know, that's not a bad idea, but... um because there's plenty of bad scenarios you can get into, but I just, I, I like being open, you know? Like, I think about sort of my team around me, it's like, they wouldn't exist if I didn't respect them, you know? And 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 value their feedback and, and advice and whatever. Like, what's the point in having a team if you don't listen to them? I just don't really get it, you know? Like, if you want to be fully independent, like aggressively, this is just coming from me, like, sweet. But if you're going to have people around you... Yeah, but you, nothing is built alone. And I don't think so. Not these days. And also, like, success has many fathers, failures, and orphans. So, yeah. no matter how you want to like play it, and you want to, you think you're just doing it independently, and you end up becoming successful. There's a bunch of people out there taking credit for your work. Yeah, yeah. So, like, why not just give in and work with the right people and yes. do it respectfully? But it's hard. Like, I, I have so many friends. I have some incredibly talented independent artists who are wildly successful. Really, who have had to figure out how to balance what it means to work with other people and by the way when you're independent doesn't really fucking mean you're independent because in order to be successful you still like no matter how you slice this pie yes other people are eating yeah it's like you're not in the vinyl place like pressing your own no. records <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nobody's working you're not working the record to radio like you're not no, no, no. servicing dsp like it doesn't matter how independent one can be there's always other people. So you have to be respectful. Absolutely. I think about that sometimes when I see, I think it can potentially be quite harmful sometimes when artists are like, I'm independent. I'm so independent. Like I don't work. And it's like, what well, you do though. And a 17 year old might see this and just shut down every connection they might be mm -hmm. able to make. So I think it's important to be open to any kind of progress. Yeah. Oh, uh, and also like people who are so grossly independent, who don't want to creatively tap into other wells only yeah. end up hurting themselves. Right. I guess, but also, you know, it's just whatever people want to do. But uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, whatever you would like to do. If you need to live alone with your songs, great. I'm sure it's nice. Like I got certain songs on this record that I wrote just entirely by myself, and they're really nice memories. I love it. It's both. I do need both in my life. Are you worried when you ship those songs off to a producer? No, about what they might think, or no, what they might do to it. Oh yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. great production. I don't ship songs off. I got to be there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I had a thing previously. Um, I remember a few years ago where uh, all my friends, that song was nearly done, but the piano had to get replayed, and uh, and someone who I worked with at the time was like, uh, "Okay, cool, we we'll just get them to do it." And I was like, "No, no, <laughs> like I don't, I don't, um, I don't think that's okay because I think the way you do everything." all your music is just a culmination of all your tendencies and personality in every single way. So like the way I play piano is quite bad. Like my technique is not good because I never learned. But also when I get one good take, um, all the little idiosyncrasies of the way I put my hands and the way I play the chords because I wasn't really taught properly. You feel it. I feel it, but also you can hear it. So like that song will sound different to if it was like, oh, this really shit hot person in LA played it in their studio and they got it done in like five minutes. It's like, it will tell over time. And if you do that all the time, with just like, if you like, like you said, ship something off to somebody to get it done in a really polished way. It's like over time, people will be like, that sound doesn't really hit me in the way it should. And like for me, again, another thing I take for granted, like I haven't played a guitar chord like, by the book in a very long time like uh, like I play the bones of the shapes but I realized over time that open strings work way better with my voice so like if I play a G like I'll just play the top two notes generally because open strings like the way they resonate the harmonics like my voice is quite loud they just work better together like if the chords are super clean and perfect like it's just it sounds not as good but all those things add Everything. up to changing the experience one gets when they listen every single thing so like if someone Here's a song of mine and is like, oh, that feels good. It's like, it's not because... It's not just the lyrics. No, it's not just the lyrics. And it's because all these things kind of work together. And uh, yeah, it's a nice thing, you know? Yeah. It's, but it's unique to you. Yes. Nobody yeah. can duplicate that. No. So it's really more than just your incredible voice as a genre, more than just your writing. It's how yeah, you play, yeah, how yeah. you present. But I think that's the beauty of music, right? Because like for me, that goes back to doing some guitar lessons and being like, I'm not really into this. And then 
like my voice I did classical music in college and I had a voice tutor and I was just I didn't feel like I didn't want to be in college and so I never went to see her and so my technique kind of changed from that because at that point I could have been taught to have a really clean like pretty voice and uh, and that so I went down a different road and so all these little things contribute to the artist you are today and I think that's so cool because like you think about other artists everybody has that story you know back to the age of eight years old when I started learning the guitar, you know? Like, it all feeds into who you end up becoming. That's what... hundred percent. Yeah. But you never mastered one thing, which I it genuinely... Oh, no, I don't claim to be... That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Why, why be... Like, God, be a master nah. and none, but try and do everything. Yeah. You, you could do everything to a point that makes it you. Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, I'd rather be... That's what fucking matters. Like, a, I'd rather be, like, a sort of imperfect, balled-up version of myself than be, like shit hot at sort of everything and not really know who I am, you know? Hey, man. Mm. Listen to Sonder, please. Uh, link in the description below. What are you thinking over there? You were talking about songs that just feel good, and Divide felt really good when I listened mm. to it, and I have no idea why. But yeah, just yeah. a song I heard, and I was like, yeah, this, I like that. This feels really good to listen nice to. Nice one. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it feels kind of retro almost, right? Yeah. It's really weird. I couldn't figure it out, but I was like, it's just something about it. Okay, cool, because yeah. I'm trying to figure it out as well. I, like, <laughs> I played it yesterday. Um... <laughs> I was listening to it and I was just like, what is it about this song? And uh, to me, I don't know, it feels a tiny bit kind of old school mm -hmm. uh, in terms of lyrics. And yeah, it's just fun to do different stuff, honestly. Well, I, the question, another question I had is, uh, were you bummed when the Sean tour got canceled? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Naturally. But also, um, I'm just not one to kind of be like, it was it like it's just too crucial a time for me to be like oh this is so bad like you know i don't know if you guys saw but we just immediately started going playing in the street and mm -hmm. um there was the most sort of beautiful juxtaposition cuz with Sean we're playing to 20,000 people every night in these like glitzy sort of stadiums and then uh and then the tour fell through and it was just like fuck it we'll just grab the guitar and like the buskin is sweet because you're sitting in the car with your guitar, you just open the door, walk out, like walk through the park and then just go play for people. And it's a really nice way of getting back to basics. Yeah. But yeah, no, it sucked when it fell through. Mm -hmm. But I also, I don't know, I just, I, I think there's no point to wasting time worrying about it, you yeah. know? And also it's his thing. So mm -hmm. it's not salvageable, you know? To me at that point, I'm like, I got to make a new plan. Yeah. Um, and, and he absolutely just has to do whatever he has to do. And that's fair. So are you hitting the cities that you were going to tour with him? In? Not necessarily, no. You're just just going to places where it felt good. Um, places that kind of matched up with my schedule anyway. And uh, yeah, it was nice because I, I, as I got there, there were certain places I was just like, I haven't been here in like four years. And this counts as a little mini gig for people. Yeah, Mini gig, mini little vacation, tour around. Yep. Yeah. And also the optics, the aesthetics. Like it's nice. You packing out a park, bro? Mm. Yeah, it's nice. And it, it kind of, I don't know, there's just something to it, you know, say... Take Boston, for example. Um, like, you could go play there and say last year, we, I think we played to like 6,000, but it, it's just in a venue and the bus pulls up and you go do your soundtrack, do the show, and you know what you're getting all day. Mm -hmm. But like the bus, can you really don't know what's going to happen. And I love that about it. Like, it's kind of ropey. And, and like, people could shout at me and I could hear them. And uh, yeah, and you just have these funny little interactions. And, and it's kind of unpredictable in a way that you miss sometimes when you're just like copy and paste doing the same show all the time but also a skill that you would never have if it wasn't for how you started exactly that's not many people can go and do that yeah it's important though right we're musicians you have to be able to do that I, and I want to say something I think uh, n not every musician can go by themselves and do that. Yeah. I think there's a lot of great artists that could go with a guitarist. Totally. Or a keyboardist and really fucking shred oh, and kill and it. Oh, and there's performers who can do countless things that I cannot do. But I tell you, playing in the street is one thing I can do. Yeah. That's, I, I do love a good sub Instagram story post. You Interesting. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you posted that this morning calling people out for, uh, <laughs> I wasn't calling anyone for, out. for busking. <laughs> yeah. Getting some inspiration from you. Yeah. That's okay. Is right. it? Yeah, if you say so. Rumor has it even Shakespeare was plagiarized, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look, it's just like that's where I started. That's what I'm proud of doing. So, uh, yeah. When you're on stage in front of 20,000 people, do you ever pretend you're just busking or do you like think, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people watching me? Nah, it's wild, yeah. Is it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like we, we headlined a festival um, recently and it was like 70,000. And it was interesting because everyone like... 
the my band and stuff everyone was so thrilled afterwards and so was I but also like I can't wait to do that again you know mm -hmm. what I mean because everything visually was so new everything was like so while I was taking it in it was all it was like you're it's like you're kind of learning on the spot every time you go up to a new level it feels like you're kind of taking it in as you're doing it and uh and so it's hard to kind of do your best alongside that learning mm -hmm. uh, which I found not difficult but just like it feels tricky in a way yeah mm -hmm. Today, as we hang out, yeah, and we're going into your sophomore album, how do we define success? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I think about it a lot. Like, trying to be happy, I guess. Because it's not, and this is sort of tale as old as time, but it's not, um, it's not achievements, right? Like, if I play the Hollywood Bowl, it's going to be unreal, but I also won't be like, sweet, did it, you know? Like, <laughs> I made it. I'm happy now. Um, and again, like, you hear J. Cole talk about that quite a bit. He's just like... That's not it, you know, that's not where your joy comes from. Um, so for me, I guess it's just about being happy. But then that's a journey I have to go on by myself. You know, it's not necessarily a creative thing where it's like, oh, when I play this venue, I'll be happy. And when I sell this many records, I'll be happy. Or when I do, like, tick this certain box, that's when I'll feel fulfilled and I'll be happy to chill forever. So I think, um, yeah, it's a thing that comes from within, definitely. Does, does love fuel happiness? Yeah, for sure. But that's not even just me, you know, that's everything. That's my family, my personal life, everything. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Saunders the album. Listen to it, please. Thank you, man. Final thoughts from you, Daniel? I think we covered a lot. We you have. did, I think, yeah. Link in the description below. Uh, genuinely one of my favorite artists. Thank you very much. Uh, you're absolutely incredible. All so. time. We'll talk again in 10 years, see if I'm on your all time list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully like next album. You okay. Can come a little bit sooner than 10 years. Jesus okay. Christmas. <laughs> uh, we've been doing this for, we. Dan and I have been together for 11 years. Doing really? This. Yeah, too nice. fucking long. Yeah, nice. long time. Okay, relax. <laughs> Dermon Kennedy, please listen to the album. There's a link in the description below, and you can also listen to all of Dermon's music on Amazon Music. Thanks for hanging out, Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.